Hey guys, my name is Tom, and welcome to part 8 of my networking tutorial series. If you haven't seen the previous videos, make sure to do that first. In this one, we'll be giving players the ability to shoot each other. All the code is on GitHub, and if you have questions or need help with an error, come check out the community on Discord. There's links to both of those in the description below. However, before we dive in, there's two things I want to address. First, there's been quite a few people both in the comments and on Discord asking how they can connect from a separate computer. This is really just a matter of changing the IP address that the client connects to. Connecting to 127.0.0.1, which is the local host IP, will only work when both the server and the client are running on the same machine. If the server and client are running on separate computers, but they're on the same network, you'll have to swap out the local host IP for the host computer's internal IP. You can find this by pulling up a command prompt, typing ipconfig, and hitting enter. This will bring up a bunch of information, but the IP you're looking for is the one listed as the IPv4 address. Finally, if the client is on a different network than the server, you'll have to connect to the server's public IP. To find this, simply google what is my IP and find a site that shows you an IPv4 address. Additionally, you'll have to forward your ports so that your router allows traffic from the internet to actually reach the host computer. Port forwarding is typically done in your router settings and the process varies slightly from router to router, so if you're not sure how to do this, google how to port forward and include your router model in your search. If it still won't connect, check any firewalls and antivirus you have, as they may also be blocking connections. When you change the IP address, make sure to do so in the Unity editor, as any changes made to variables in the inspector override changes in your code. It's an easy thing to overlook, and quite a few people have made that mistake, so if things aren't connecting, double check that you changed the IP in the right place. Second, there's a bit of a problem right now when a player is connected to the server, and then a second client connects, disconnects, and then reconnects. This causes an error, because at the moment we haven't taken any steps to let clients know when someone else leaves the game. This means that anyone that remains connected will still have a key value pair in the player's dictionary, and when someone rejoins, their player ID is already in the dictionary, which causes an error. Additionally, clients can still see players that aren't actually in the game anymore, which isn't ideal, so we're going to take care of that by sending a packet to everyone that's connected when someone leaves. First of all, in the server's packet file, add a player disconnected element to the server packets enum. Next, add a player disconnected method to the server send class. Inside, we'll construct our packet, add the player ID to it, and send it through TCP because we don't want this packet getting lost, and TCP will ensure it reaches its destination. At the end of the client class's disconnect method, call our player disconnected method to send the packet. We still need to handle the packet on the client, so add the same player disconnected element to the client side server packets enum. Then in the client handle class, add a player disconnected method. Inside, we'll read out the ID of the player who disconnected and use that to first destroy his game object and then remove him from the player's dictionary. And finally, in the client class's initialize client data method, add the new packet to the packet handler's dictionary. If we connect two clients to the server now and then one of them disconnects, the other client can no longer see the other player. Additionally, if the client that left reconnects, it doesn't produce errors anymore. With that all out of the way, let's jump into shooting, which is what this tutorial is actually about. We'll start off by letting the server know when a client left clicks with their mouse, which will be our shoot input. To do this, open up the packet class in the client code and add a player shoot element to the client packets enum. In the client send class, add a new method to create the packet. Inside, we'll add the view direction of the player and then send the packet through TCP to make sure it doesn't get lost. We're including the view direction to make sure that the server knows which direction the player is shooting in. The normal rotation that we're sending every tick is insufficient to do this, mainly because it doesn't account for the camera's vertical rotation. In other words, the bullet would be shot perfectly horizontally, regardless of where the player is actually looking. Additionally, there's no guarantee that the rotation that is set at the moment that the player shoots will be the one that the server considers to be current at the time when it receives the shoot packet. This is due to latency, potential packet loss, and the fact that we haven't taken any steps to deal with either of those factors. Next, open up the player controller class and add an update method. Inside, check if the left mouse button was pressed, and if it was, we'll call our player shoot method to send our packet. This method expects a view direction, so add a transform field at the top and pass its forward component to the player shoot method. 
Now head into Unity, open up the local player prefab, and drag the camera object into the player controller's cam transform slot. The next step is to handle the player shoot packet on the server, so open up the server's packet class and add the same player shoot element to the client packet's enum. Then add a method to handle this packet to the client handle class. Inside, we'll simply read out the view direction for now, since we don't have any shooting logic in place yet. To make sure this method actually gets called when we receive a player shoot packet, open up the server class, scroll down to the initialized server data method, and add the packet to the packet handler's dictionary. Shooting other players isn't much fun if nothing happens to them when they get shot, so we're also going to implement a basic health system. To do this, open the player class and add a transform field which will be the origin point of every shot, a health field, and a max health field. In the initialize method, set the health to the max health. At the bottom of the class, add a shoot method that takes in a vector 3. Before we do anything else, call this method from our player shoot packet handler method. Back in the player class's shoot method, cast a ray using the shoot origin's position and the view direction. If the ray hits something, check if the collider we hit is tagged as a player. Inside this if statement is where we'll be damaging players. Now add a take damage method. Right away, check if the player's health is less than or equal to zero, in which case we'll just return out of the method since there's no point in damaging a player who is dead. Below, subtract the amount of damage being done from the health, and then check if the player's health has dropped below zero. If it has, set the health to zero so that we don't have negative health, disable the character controller, move the player to wherever you want him to respawn, and then send a player position packet to make sure all clients move him to that location. In the fixed update method above, add a check to see if the player is dead, because there's no point in moving a player and sending position updates if he isn't alive. Additionally, calling an inactive character controller's move method will spam your console with warnings, which I'd rather avoid. Below the take damage method, I'm also going to add a respawn method. Since I don't want players respawning instantly, I'll use a coroutine to add a delay. When a player respawns, we want to set his health back to the max health and re-enable the character controller. To let clients know when a player's health has changed or when someone respawned, we'll need to add some new packets to send, so open up the packet class and add a player health and player respawned element to the server packets enum. In the server send class, create a new method called player health. In this packet, we want to include the ID of the player whose health has changed as well as his health. Then we'll send it through TCP. Then add a second method for the player respawned packet, inside which we'll just write the player ID and then send it through TCP. Back in the player's respawn method, we can now call the player respawned method. At the bottom of the take damage method, we'll also call the player health method to make sure clients know when someone's health has changed. Back in Unity, open up the player prefab and tag the root object as a player. Then create an empty game object called shoot origin, position it where the player's camera is positioned on the client side, and then drag it into the player script's shoot origin slot. Now we need to handle these packets on the client, so add the new elements to the server packets enum in the client's packet class. Next, add a player health method to the client handle class, inside which we'll simply read out the player ID and the health for now. Then add a player respawned method and read out the player ID. In the client class's initialize client data method, add both of these new packet handler methods to the packet handler's dictionary. We need to add quite a bit to the player manager class, so open that up. Add two floats for the health and max health, as well as a mesh renderer field. Then create a new method called initialize, inside which we'll set several of the player manager's properties. In the game manager spawn player method, we'll call the initialize method instead of setting the player manager's values manually. Back in the player manager class, add a method called set health. Inside, set the player's health to whatever value is passed in, and then check if the health is less than zero. This is why we don't need the server to send a packet when the player dies. We're already sending a packet every time a player's health changes, so we can let clients use that info to determine when a player has died. Below, create a method called die and make it disable the player model. Then add a respawn method inside which we'll re-enable the player model and set the player's health back to the max health. Now we can go back to the client handle class. If you haven't guessed, in the player health method we'll call the player's set health method, and in the player respawn method we'll call the player's respawn method. 
Back in Unity, you open up the local player prefab and drag the capsule into the player manager's model slot. Do the same for the regular player prefab. Before we test this, you'll notice that when we connect right now, our mouse isn't locked to the game window, which makes aiming rather difficult. To fix this, open up the camera controller class and add a new toggle cursor mode method. Inside, we'll switch the cursor's visibility and change its lock state depending on the current value. In the update method, choose a key you want to use to lock and unlock the mouse. I'll use the escape key. Finally, we only want to call the look method when the cursor is locked to the screen. If we run the game now, pressing whichever key you chose should toggle the mouse's lock state, although you may also need to click on the game view to actually make the cursor disappear. I'm also going to add a small square in the middle of the UI, just so it's easier to tell where I'm aiming. If we were to run this now, it wouldn't work, so open the server's player class. In the take damage method, we need to start the respawn coroutine, which I forgot to do earlier. In the shoot method above, I also forgot to actually call the take damage method, so make sure to do that. Finally, the last thing I forgot to do was to set a default value for player's max health, so open up the player and local player prefabs and give them the same max health as you did on the server. If we now connect a client, select his player object on the server, connect a second client, and then shoot the first player, we should see his health decrease on the server. When the player's health reaches zero, he should disappear and then respawn a short time later. Anyways, that's going to be it for this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please don't forget to smash the like button, and if you've got any feedback, make sure to leave it in the comments below. In the next one I think we'll add a grenade-like weapon, which will allow me to cover projectiles, area damage, and picking up objects all in one video. Consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell to make sure you don't miss that or any other videos I upload. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.